One of the superintendents of the local canal here and he's talking to us today about some of the problems they've been having with the muskrats and the beavers. This canal is over 120 years old. The biggest risk is when these canals breach. It's a lot of water, it causes a lot of damage. The main thing is we don't want to kill anybody. We don't want to ruin anybody's house. We don't want to flood any neighborhoods. See the dens and the holes down through here probably two months ago had a major landslide toward the canal ended up breaching and flooded down to the downstream side and we got to be here to try to prevent it as much as possible so that's what we're trying to do the great thing is we can do it in a 100 percent natural way doing us a big favor here so it turns out they had a leak in the canal and uh, so they had to shut everything down during what's normally the high water season so that they could repair the leak. So luckily for us, it gives us the opportunity to come out and see if we can catch any beavers or muskrats that would normally be hiding in the really deep water. If you take a look at the, the shore there, you can see the line where the water level would typically be. So we're took looking at just barely kind of hugging the top of my waders. But obviously now it's down below my boots. I don't even need waders on. Uh, unfortunately, this is one of the shallower parts of the canal, so we'll th there will be spots where it's deeper, and that'll make it extra tricky for us to catch anything. But we'll do the best we can, take this opportunity to help the canal stay in good or working order. And uh, yeah, wish us luck. What was Tipsy chasing at? He is looking a little birdie just a bit. No, Leia, far side, far side, Leia, far side. See, at this time of year, they lose all their feathers because of uh, molting. Good girl, yes, where's the coon? Good girl, where is it? Good girl, yes. They had a good dog. They had a good dog. Oh, that's such a good dog. Oh, that's such a good girl. She's searching right now. Though. <laughs> Good girl. Yeah, it's the ducks. Good girl. No, far side. She thinks she's going to get in trouble for scaring the ducks. That's what it is. <laughs> Good girl. Yes. Good girl. Yeah, there's a big old crane up there. Look at that. Big old uh, heron, is it? Yep. This Bye, is Daddy. usually pretty consistent for Bye, having Daddy. a little... What? Cute girl. Yeah. Oh man, look at all those coon. What you doing, sweet girl? Raccoon. Lots of raccoon tracks. Oh, I got Those kind of look muskratty. That looks muskratty. Let's try it and see. Daddy's duck, can I get out too? Yes, you can get out. Now be careful, the mud is really deep. Where's the shells? Daddy's duck has to sit down. I get it. So the water's too deep. And the water is too muddy, so our only luck is for the mink to flush it out and then we let it swim. They typically go downstream, and as you go farther downstream, the water gets shallower and less muddy. So the hope is that we can chase it all the way down there to where we can actually catch it. So let's see what happens. We, we got it last time doing that, so let's see what happens this time. Right there, muskrat. Told you. Did you see the muskrat, Alden? Yeah. Well, are you saying you see a muskrat? We just saw a muskrat. <laughs> Yeah, this is a hard spot in the best of conditions, and this is not the best of conditions. There he is right there, little one. Little guy up by them? Yep. No, pop his head up right where that ripple's coming out. Yeah, see him I'll down see there? Keep, just keep your eye on it. I'll There's two. Two. Oh, yeah, I see the other one. 
Well, I'll try and walk that way. I don't. I hate hunting the little ones, but this is a pest control job, you know. I'm not doing my job if I don't go after every muskrat here. Yeah, he's just up on the bank there. Yeah, I see him. There's one way down there. We might be able to get that one. See if you can follow it. I'm gonna get up on shore and come run with you. <coughs> you can see, girl. Thank you so much for listening to Daddy. You're doing such a good job. I'm really proud of you. He's gassing. The water's a little shallower and he should be tired. Yeah, he's right getting now. tired. I could tell. Okay, right there. He's gonna surf me pretty soon here. They treat on the back track and I'll yep. check forward. Other end. Yep. Right there, Bubbles. Where, up here? Yep. The dogs know we're on something. <laughs> I'm going to try and get on the far side. Up there's Bubbles. There he is. I can see him. I can see him. He's right by the shore. He was hugging the shore. Here, yep. I see him. I see him. There you go. Nice. Got him. And that's what I was hoping to do, even just hunting there, because that was about our only chance of catching anything, was to get them to leave that deep water and just swim them down until they get tired. A little squirt. These guys are just as mean as the big ones. They're just a little smaller. Is about it. There's just as mean as any big muskrat. This is why I don't like hunting this type of year, time of year. But when you're doing a pest control job, it's a little different. It's kind of funny, like I said, even though this is a pest control job, I'm supposed to get every muskrat out of here. I honestly feel kind of bad catching these little guys. Cause you know, if I had to just wait a few more months, he'd be a big guy and have a lot more meat on him. And you know, I have more of a preservation type mentality with this species as opposed to brown rats where you want to get every single one you can find no matter where you find them. These guys, even when I'm supposed to get rid of them all, I kind of have an internal desire to not get rid of them all, to preserve them. There's no way to eradicate them across, you know, any big area. They breed so fast, it's just not, not realistic. But I still feel bad. You know, if I had to wait just a few more months, this would be a big old rabbit-sized rodent instead of this little teeny rat-sized thing. But yeah. Anyway, gotta do my job. <laughs> He's a cute little guy. But man, he gets to hold you with those teeth. He won't, he won't be looking so cute. So it's August. When do they normally... When are they born? So they are When do born, they get weaned? The late litters are being born right around now. So they typically give birth to their first litters around April, May. Then they have often a second litter, um, you know, around later later in the summer to midsummer. And they will occasionally in this location have three litters. So like one in the late spring, one in the middle of summer, one late summer. But that's not very often. One or two is more typical here in Utah. And so because they only have you know, typically two litters, they, they make up for it by having great big litters. If you go down south, you go down to like Louisiana where they breed year round, there is no time when they're not having babies. Um, their litters are like half the size. They top out at five or six, average more like three or four. Here, they average like six or six to eight, top out at like nine or 10. So that's how they make up for not breeding as frequently is to have big batches all together. But yeah, really cool little critters. I really like muskrats, you know. If these guys in our state, they're illegal to transport uh, uh, to new places and release. That's illegal. 
if it wasn't for that, I would totally be letting this guy go in like one of my favorite spots that I'm not paid to do pest control at. There's no way I'd be harvesting this little guy. He would totally be a transplant. But that is completely illegal in the state, so I can't do that, no matter how much I want to. But yeah, super cool little guys. One thing you'll notice is their tails on the babies are more round. They don't, they're not as flattened as the adults. They just flatten with age. And it's not perfectly round. There is a slight flattening on the side, but it's not as pronounced as with the adults. And they also are more gray colored. If you see, they have like this grayish under fur. And as they mature, it turns more and more brown. Damn. Okay, let's go see what else we can catch. Look what I found. What do you think it is? Baby muskrat. Oh, that's so cute. Does baby muskrat bite? They sure do. They bite just like big muskrats. I don't want to get bit. You can pet it back here. That's so scary. Just don't touch up there. He'll bite you. See those teeth? <laughs> See, they're soft. Want to touch it, Eleanor? Keep my eyes open though, because I'm pretty sure something's falling down here. The only question is how far. I don't know how to open this. Don't see anything. Oh, there's right there. <laughs> I think I can see his cloud of light. Right there. He was right under your net. Yeah. He's trying pretty hard to go back this way. <laughs> He's coming this way, I saw him. Oh, here's, here's some bubbles. They're moving pretty fast though. Something's swimming really fast. Yeah, I see that. Trail of them. That's way too fast for a Daddy, horse look, look at that Oh yeah, it's, there's some, oh there was a fish or something just swam up under here. There, oh, it's a duck. It's a duck, that's why. I was like, it's way <laughs> too fast for a muskrat. <laughs> Let me wander up here and see if he's just sitting on the bank just up here or something. I wonder if he's up under here somewhere. I never saw him come out of the wall. Got him. Okay. Alfin. Now how do I get out of this mess? <laughs> I need snowshoes. Oh, whoops, sorry. Leia, stay out of it, huh? There we go. Sweet, we got two. Well, at least we can say we're not going home empty-handed. Oh. Chuck, we'll watch you. You stay here. Don't get out. I guess you could stand here and film that way. Just don't let the girls get out and just kind of keep glancing back at them. Okay, look at all these pea traps. We caught, we had one time we came in here and there was four coons in the same little bush right there. We only caught one of them because they all piled on the same coon. <laughs> I was not expecting that to be so shit hard and high. I'm like, <laughs> I was expecting to fall a little farther. Where's the coon? Where's the coon?
That crazy sound you hear is Gypsy baying a raccoon in the reeds. Unlike Boss and Leia, Gypsy will only grab the raccoon if it turns its butt and tries to run, or if she has another dog there to help her. All this goofy screaming she's doing is just her funny way of barking excitedly when she has an animal cornered. Due to her small size, I very much prefer Gypsy stays back and barks at the raccoon, rather than attacking it head on the way Boss or Leia typically do. All Gypsy needs to do is bark at the raccoon and bite it on the butt if it tries to run away. If she can corner the raccoon there long enough, one of the bigger dogs will be there shortly to do the rest. Got it, Boss? Good boy. Good dogs. Good dogs. That's good dogs. Good dogs. Yeah, that's good dogs. Good girl, where is it? So are you still good for Tuesday or is that still up in the air? Yeah, no, I think I'm good for Tuesday if you want to go. Sweet. You may be wondering what I've been thinking about this little dog Gypsy during the time I've been working with her. I'm going to take this opportunity to show one of the serious weaknesses I've found with her and the one hesitation I have with making her a permanent part of our team. If you look here, you can see the awkward curve in her back. This curve makes it so she can't run naturally like a more athletic dog can. Her spine doesn't bend and flex like it should, significantly slowing her down. To better show what I'm talking about, let's watch the fastest dog in the world, the Greyhound, run. Of course, we all know that long legs are necessary for speed, but there's more to it than that. Look at how this Greyhound runs with more than just his legs. He runs with his entire body. Now, of course, we can't expect a little terrier to run with the skill and grace of the sprinting specialist Greyhound, but we can hope to have a dog that is built in such a way that it can also run with its entire body, not just its legs. The lack in speed wouldn't be that big of a deal if all I used her for was going down holes and working thick brush. The problem comes in when ratting. Her lack of speed and athletic ability would be a real crippling weakness when trying to catch an escaping rat. Other than this weakness, I really like Gypsy, so there's a chance I will overlook this particular weakness, so we'll just have to wait and see what I decide to do. One thing I can tell you for sure is I will take my time making this decision. Good dog. Where is it? <laughs> oh, we've got all kinds. Oh, what's that one in the? That's squirrel? a rock squirrel. Watch where it goes. Yeah. See if you can get it on film. I don't know if you can. That's kind of tricky. Yeah, it's cool. Oh, he's right under that tree somewhere. He's, he stopped. He's right on the lowest rock. Sitting Not up there. He's still going. Far side. Oh, he's sitting right in front of the hole. He's, yeah, he's, I see him. he's about to go in the same hole that we look. You could see that we've disturbed it. We got one out of there last year. There, I'll let you get a shot. Yeah, I see him. Can I get out? Hold on. This exact hole we caught one in last year. Daddy, look at that found trap! Good girl, Leia. Okay, come on, Olive. Do you want to cross with Daddy? Okay, Leia, outside. Leia, outside.
There he goes, his tail's a wiggling. Leia, come watch. It's a squirrel, sweet girl. No. He's oh, he's got it. No. He's got it. Good job, Crockett. Crockett caught a squirrel. No. Yeah, Crockett got his first squirrel. Oh, there's another one. There's another one. Get it. Good job, Leia. Oh, there's another one. There's another one. Did you get it? So good productive day today. We got two muskrats, a squirrel, and a raccoon. So the canal company will be happy. Uh, by removing these animals, we help to reduce erosion and reduce the flood risk in the canal. All of this is a serious flood risk. And so they pay me to come in and remove it. It's a good productive day. The dogs get, did a good job. The mink did a good job. It was all around fun. Thanks for watching guys, we'll show you more next time.